Alright. This is pretty crazy. Do you guys know that Lima, Peru is 4,157 miles away from Enoch, Utah? And I'm going to be there for 15, no wait, 151 million, 51,000. 897 minutes. <laughs> it's been a long, it's been quite a, a long wait waiting for a mission. It's been like eight years in the making. I've been planning on this my whole life since I was a little kid, running around, running around the streets with coal. I always hung out with coal when I was really little. Um, and when I was in middle school, and when I was in high school, when I was first in high school. And, uh, you know how everyone's always talking about how freshmen are really annoying? Well, I'll tell you what, I was probably the most annoying. I was the worst one out of all of them. I was really loud, and I talked a lot, and I talked really loud, and I was really scrawny, and I kind of hunched over, and I was probably not very attractive. <laughs> and a lot of you that have known me for that long, they're like, yeah, yep, that's true. <laughs> and for those of you that only know me a couple years, you're probably like, what? He used to not be attractive? <laughs> but now here I am, and I'm attractive and going on a mission. <laughs> and I was actually conveniently asked to talk about missionary work, which was probably like the best missionary farewell topic I could have gotten. So, thanks for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is a full-time mission. That means I'm dedicating my whole life to preaching the gospel and helping others come into Christ. I'm, every minute of my life is going to be dedicated to that. Now, not all of us are on a full-time mission. A lot of us have work, and we, a, lot of us have, a lot of you guys have families and other hobbies that you want to do. So you can't be full-time missionaries. But it's still important that you guys are helping others come into Christ because we need all the help we can get because this is the last dispensation. And so I want to talk about a lot about member missionary work. And it's all going to tie together to full-time missionary work and member missionary work. They all, they all work. They all work together. And M. Russell Ballard in one of his talks, he says, We must prepare ourselves to assist the missionaries in finding those our Heavenly Father's children who will embrace the message of the restoration. And so, how can we all be missionaries? It seems like not all of us really could. Does it? There's so many of us. Do we all really need to be missionaries? I think that we all have a divine purpose to be instruments in God's hands. Um, I'm going to talk about the word divine. It's an interesting word. I looked up some of the, some of the, like to break it down. I kind of broke it down into the root words, and what was interesting is the root word div, D-I-V. It means separate, and so you hear about how we all have a divine purpose, which is very true. Even people that are members of the church, even people that have gone down maybe unrighteous paths, they have divine purpose. They just chose to go on a different path that didn't lead them to their purpose. Um, so divine, it means godly. Div means, is a root word that means separate. So it is separate from worldly things. It's beyond, uh, it's beyond what we have just part of the world. And the cool thing about that root word is diverse also has that root word. Separate, it means everything is different. And that works too if you say we all have a diverse purpose to be instruments in God has. It's like because each one of us, we God created all of us differently. And there's a lot of beauty in that because each one of us does has our own part in the gathering of Israel. It's like a puzzle and you may not fit somewhere in the puzzle, but it doesn't mean that you're not a perfect fit in a certain place in the puzzle. And all of us need to work together, though. We may be an important piece in the puzzle, but if, we, if we're if we not all working together to put it together, it's not going to be the 
what it should be. <clears throat> I'm going to switch gears to the, the difficulty of missionary work. It's not easy. It seems like it should be, but it's not. One of my closest friends, Mitch, he um, left on his mission a few months ago, and I remember his first, one of his first letters, I think it was the second letter, he was talking about how he goes to classes, he has to come to classes prepared, he doesn't have much time to prepare to give lessons, but he has to give them, and there's so much stuff like that he has to do, and he was saying, he says something like, I wish I could say I was just, maybe felt super light, and I was lifted up, but I really wish I could say that, but I don't, I f I'm very tired, and it's really hard for me. My cousin Jordan, he just got back from his mission a few months ago, actually just a week after Mitch left, and um, I, he told me a story about how there was a guy that he was teaching, and he was working on him for a really long time, and how he really had a good testimony, and how they taught him really well, but the problem was, is he was a smoker, and he couldn't drop that addiction. Um, probably the very worst story of all is the story of Alma trying to teach the Zormites. And a lot of us are familiar with that story, but they were just so stubborn and so caught up in their false religion that they wouldn't listen. And he tried so hard and so hard to get them to listen, and he was just making fun of him and criticized, and it was so hard for him. Um, so why is it hard? Jeffrey R. Holland puts this really good in his talk. He says, anyone who does any kind of missionary work will have the occasion to ask, why is this so hard? Why doesn't it go better? Why can't our success be more rapid? Why aren't there more people joining to the church? It's the truth. We believe in angels. We trust in miracles. Why don't people just flock to the font? Why isn't the only missionary risk in missionary work that of pneumonia from being soaking wet all day and night in the baptismal font? <laughs> you will have the occasion to ask those questions. I have thought about this a great deal. I offer this as my personal feeling. I'm convinced that missionary work is not easy because salvation is not a cheap experience. Salvation was never easy. We are the church of Jesus Christ. This is the truth. And he is our great eternal head. How could we believe that it would be easy for us when it was never, ever easy for him? It seems to me that missionaries and mission leaders have to spend at least a few moments in Gethsemane. Missionaries and mission leaders have to take at least a step or two towards the summit of Calvary. Now please don't misunderstand. I'm not talking about anything anywhere near what Christ experienced. That would be presumptuous and sacrilegious. But I believe that missionaries and investigators to come to the truth, to come to salvation, to know something of this price that has been paid, will have to pay a token of that same price. So, I think, wow, that's, I, I heard that my mom, she's a really good mom, she sent me a video with that talk, and that is so amazingly powerful. And I think that explains so well why it's hard, because it was never easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus, why should it be for us? Now, I'm not going to stand up here and talk and spend my whole talk telling you that missionary work is hard, because that would ruin the point, and you guys would probably not want to do very much missionary work <laughs> if I just ran and rave about how hard it is. <clears throat> important thing to know is where to start. If you know where to start, then that'll help you. So, where do you start? This is, I'm about to read scripture, I think it illustrates the most important about missionary work. It's, um, it's Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through 39. And it's a lawyer, and he's talking to Jesus, and he says, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? 
Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, I know the scripture, it doesn't say anything like missionaries, it doesn't say missionary work, it doesn't say teach or anything that directly has to do with missionary work, but I can tell you that it is the most important part about missionary work, is to love God and to love everyone around you, because if you don't love God, then he can't then you can't teach them about God. And if you don't love them, then you have, then your desire to help them come into Christ is not going to be as strong as it could be. That's the most important thing. So, now you get the love thing down, but where do you go from there? It's, there's a lot more to it than that. You can't just love God and love thy neighbor and expect people to just want to get baptized. But that's the thing. Missionary work is a lot more than just telling people to get baptized. It's a lot more than just telling people to read the Book of Mormon. It's a lot more than just telling people to do anything. It's more than just talking. In fact, it's not just teaching. It's example. Example, I could almost say it's more important than teaching them. Because you can't teach them if they don't see you as a good example. They won't, they won't listen to what you say if they don't think you're a good person and that you're of Christ. <clears throat> In 1 Timothy 4.12, he says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers. that thing where they want to know. 
because you, because like I said, you can't force them to know. You have to. They have to want to know. Otherwise, they're not going to listen. <clears throat> Another thing is activities. There's lots of church activities we have. We have board parties and we have mutual. And those are great things because people that are non-members they be invited and they can see how happy we are and how and how we can be good examples to them. We can. It also doesn't have to be church related. Even your friends can invite them to go play a game of basketball and if they and they may ask you questions there because they notice things about you. And also, of course, something really important is to help people in need. When you help the poor or when you help sick people, those are really big things because people notice that and when they see you do that they want to they want to be like you because they see that it brings you so much happiness and that you enjoy working and helping people. So I want all of you to know that you're all special to God and you all have divine purpose be torn in his hands. He loves each one of you, and he loves people that aren't here. He loves the people that have not made such good choices in their life. And, um, and he wants you to bring those people back. And so, the last scripture I'm going to read is DNC 18, chapter, chapter 18, verse 10. It says, remember, the worth of souls is great in the sight of God. And so, when you get up there and you've brought souls back to God, you've helped people come to Christ, He will rejoice because of what you did for that person and what you did for Him. <laughs> and I know this is the true church, and I know that we can all help others come unto Christ. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.